Hey, Forex Fortune Hunters, Tom Wilmot. Welcome back to our series on trading currencies with the MetaTrader trading platform. It's really pretty easy to use once you get the hang of it, and that's the purpose of these videos, not only to show you the basics, but also to show you how it's possible to trade with a trend, improve your risk-reward ratios, add and subtract various indicators until you get a template that's the one you're looking for that customizes your personal approach, whether it's on a five-minute time frame, one-hour, four-hour daily chart. So, without further ado, hold on to your hat, and we'll get started with this chapter in just a minute. Okay, Fortune Hunters, today we have something I hope you will find very interesting, and that is uh, we are going to talk about a crossover between the MetaTrader platform and Fidelity ATP, Active Trader Pro. We have videos on both in our channel, as you know, uh, and I have in the past shown you how you can take some of the indicators you see here in MetaTrader and migrate them over to ATP in order that you can use that for stocks and bonds and uh, options and so on. While we're not going to get into the specifics today for uh, uh, for Fidelity, I'm going to begin with MetaTrader. I will show you in just uh, a few minutes how the two can be intertwined. Uh, and so let's uh, let's take a look at things. First of all, we're going to describe to you uh, the new indicator I put into Double Whammy Plus. Uh, then we're going to go over all of the indicators that are here and show you exactly where you might want to put a stop loss and uh, as well as uh, what your upside potentials might be, uh, how you can trade this uh, in, in the fashion of uh, the templates that we use. Uh, I'm going to go over this uh, first and then I'll get to the Australian dollar and currency ETFs and how you might compare them. I hope that'll be interesting material for you. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, uh, our old double whammy uh, indicator, and I can bring that up for you simply by going to this icon. And we can see, let's see what we've got going on here. Here we go uh, with just double whammy. And that's how we started a long time ago. I'll get rid of this one. We had uh, the uh, trend magic indicator which is this one right here. And we had the chandelier indicator, this one right here. We had uh, really the very basics were the RSI with our band set to 4555. We had our uh, colored MACD histogram here that shows when you get this kind of a tan uh, bar, you get a pullback. You can see that's the case here and so forth. And we also have in the past added the stochastic. And you can see when you're going up, a pullback in the stochastic and then a crossover back up again uh, of the, uh, the the stochastic line with the uh, tra trace line, that's the indication that you don't want to be short for sure. You can see this here. You can see the pulls here. Now, uh, basically, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to clear the screen a little bit, and we're going to get rid of the uh, stochastic just for openers, and we'll leave the other two for us. That'll give us a little bit more screen room. And uh, in particular, then what we can do is to move over into our double whammy plus. Now, what we did in double whammy plus was to add our multiple moving averages, as well as now today, I'll show you how to add the T3. So let's go back over to our set of templates. We don't want to save anything there. Let's go to double whammy plus. That will come up now. We also have on this particular chart, we have some session times, but let's clean it up and get that out of the way as well. And that's up in the top section here. We don't need that for today. We'll delete that one. And by the way, you can modify these just like I'm doing and not lose your original template unless you save the new version, which you can rename. So there's no problem with setting up your template with as many indicators as you'd like and then deleting them once it's been saved so that you can get a simplified version or depending upon the time frame you're looking at, you may want more or fewer indicators. 
So let's see what's going on here. Now this one has what I call the T3 Tilson in it. And the T3 Tilson was created by Tom Til uh, Tilson back in the late 1990s. It, it is a smooth moving average. You can see it here in a violet. I, I put a violet shade in. And you can see that when you get to a point where you're about to cross your moving averages over the Tilson, that's when things get dicey. There's another reason for using this. You can see there's a dicey downward trend, an upward trend, and even if it comes back to test it. Now, in the T3 Tilson, I have used a 24 property, and also sometimes if you want to change the hot uh, indicator uh, input, you can use, I sometimes use the uh, uh, 618 extension as my lucky number here, and so you can in fact do that. It doesn't modify it much, but it modifies it a little bit, and you can see here once again, there are Moving averages never cross the Tilson, even though we had some price bars that did. In this particular case, I'm using a one-hour chart, and you can see that uh, the two entries that would be most appropriate here would be the entries that you have as you're moving higher after you wait. There's no entry on the one-hour chart here because of no pullback, but here there is a pullback and a hold right above the, the uh, trend magic. As you're in the midst of a move, a hold above the trend magic is another great place to potentially enter. And I would be very careful not to have much more than a 10 or 15 pip stop below any of these. That's how I would set it up. And, uh, and so that, uh, that's how we uh, take a look at it. Mostly I'm using the chandelier. It's a little far away on a one hour chart. I'm using it to see changes in trend very basic changes and anticipation of moves uh, higher. So now the other thing we can do here is let's change our time frame to 30 minutes and see if this becomes clearer. And in fact, here's another one too, a 30 minute chart. This for newers, new, uh, newbies is the, the uh, crossover of the day. And on Forex.com, this occurs at eight o'clock in the evening East Coast time. So we had a good move to the upside over here. Once again, to remember, if you click on the cross hatch and then you left click and hold, you can pull it up here to see how far you've gone. 58 pips in this move starting in the Asian session. OK, so now that we have the T3 Tilson in place, once again, one of the things I developed after using this so many years ago was uh, what I call the, the uh, T3 Tilson status indicator that I've got over here. And what that means, it doesn't go back in time, but if we go way over to where we are today, you can see that the T3 Tilson, although it's flattening, is still headed higher. Each one of these is higher than the one before. And so you would be getting reds in this area if it were headed downward, and you'd be getting yellows if it were in this situation where it's flattening out and getting ready to cross over. Now here's a great example of on the 30 minute chart how you can use the Tilson as your stop loss in addition to the chandelier. Basically you can see here we had a great move higher then we had a pullback into the bands, which is our standard way of looking for an entry. We had a wonderful morning star configuration here. Let me open that up so you can see it more clearly. Here it is right here. Down bar uncertainty, uncertainty in the middle, and then a retrace above the trend magic. A great place to enter right there. Your, your uh, stop loss down to the lower level is uh, 19 pips. It's uh, 13 pips to the T3 Tilson. You certainly wouldn't want to take out the low of the Morning Star. And so it's in this area, and that's a very comfortable 10 to 15 pips. So there you go. Now let's see what our re risk reward is. Uh, at uh, 15 pips, 45 pips would be a 3 to 1 ratio. Let's see if we can get it. And in fact, we're up in the 68 region. Now, this is the Aussie dollar again, Australian versus U.S. Uh, the Australian dollar is increasing in value compared to the U.S. dollar back in the 10th of December. This was in particular, and for sure, given interest rates and, and currencies based on interest rates, 
the fact that the U.S. is going to have uh, have to have such a stimulus to get the economy going again, based upon our real catastrophe in terms of COVID here in the states and failure of anybody to do anything normal. Uh, the uh, basic idea is that uh, our currency is going to have to weaken in order to get things uh, started up again. So that's uh, all the political advertising I do for today. In any event, here we are. It is the uh, 14th of December. This is a Monday. And you can see here again on the 30-minute chart, we took out this level. And what you can also do in this particular case is to t put your uh, target here, your vertical line right here, and then wait for your pullback. See, even drop down to a lower time frame. And here's a perfect place for you to enter. It comes right back to the, t uh, to the, uh, the trend magic line, pulls back into this area. Great idea. Your, your pip count uh, on a 15-minute chart down to the... Uh, down to the chandelier is very low. Up in this area, it crosses the T3 tilts and follows. And then you can see our downdraft over here. But in the meantime, if you're scalping on this 15, you can get yourself into a 20 pip trade. And that's uh, 20 pips a day is a great way to make your equity curve go up and to the right. Okay, we're going to just take a quick break while I set up the next set of slides. So hang in there and I'll show you how this uh, flows over into Fatality Active Trader Pro. Okay, uh, while we were on break there, I took the liberty of changing our odd uh, our Australian dollar, uh, US dollar chart to a weekly chart. You can see that here in fine print, and obviously we've got it weekly over here. Now, you might never want to bother to do this if you were simply trading in uh, on MetaTrader and in the Forex market, although you can take long-term positions, no problem. But uh, let's just take a look. We've got now our double whammy plus up on the wall again. Here's our uh, T3 Tilson. You can see that it's tracking along in this area here. This was uh, back in 2019, and the, the odd was basically on a downward leg here. The dollar was strengthening. This was during the China trade talks, and there was a lot of trouble with the Australian dollar as they thought China was weakening in its outputs and, and need for uh, imports from Australia. So as a big trading partner of China, Australia was getting hit pretty hard. And then early part of 2020, obviously, smash, damn, down we go with the COVID. Uh, and that's what basically happened to every market in March and into May and April. But as things improved in China and in Australia as well, in New Zealand, where they had very few cases and things were getting back to normal, while the U.S. continued to deteriorate, this is what you saw happen on the odd. In the weekly chart, we move very quickly in this area. Now, you wouldn't have to watch this on a weekly chart. You could watch it on a daily chart for sure. And there was lots of money to be made. At the very least, you know here, what what you see is an upward trend. We had a period of time when we were in consolidation after this big side, big upside move here. And you could, as we usually do, drop down to the one hour or the four hour chart or the daily chart or any of the rest of them. But that's not the purpose of this. What I wanted to show you is that if you go to Google and you type in currency ETFs list, okay, and then click on that, you're going to find that there are a number of them that are related to currency trading as well as uh, corporate profits and, and corporation uh, stock symbols and so forth. And if you get into this area, you could even get into Fidelity free ETF trades. But there are some of the others that are pretty good that are in Vesco. Those are the ones that have the ones that are of, of potentially most interest. And uh, you can see also that in the, in the world of ETFs, there are also uh, an index uh, and uh, and a currency ETFs especially. You can have double and triple time because some of them don't tend to move very fast. And it's sort of like watching grass grow. So for purposes of this uh, video, we're simply going to concentrate on the regular Australian dollar strength uh, ETF. And we're going to plug that in in just a second. But
but you can see there's there are a bunch of them. There's a big list. The ETF database is another place to find it and so forth. These are the list of leveraged ones that you can buy if you're interested in tracking the currency markets as well as your equities in your IRA or uh, self-managed accounts. Okay. Now notice FXE is for the euro, but we're going to take a look today at the Australian dollar. So I'm going to I'm going to plug that one in over in Fidelity. I hope. Let's see what we can do here. Here's my Fidelity chart, Active Trader Pro, and you can see it here with MetaTrader in the background. And what I did for you already is to plug in FXA, which is the Australian dollars uh, ETF. And bottom line is you can see here on the weekly chart, that's a 195 minute. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. We'll go here to weekly. Remember, you come down to your time frames and your frequencies, daily, weekly. And I think it's pretty interesting for you to see that it tracks exactly as we saw in MetaTrader with this move to the north. And look here, even with our abbreviated version of Double Whammy Plus, with this, you can see that consolidation that you saw occur uh, in the uh, October time frame gave you a great chance for an entry and a move from 70 to 75 on the uh, on the ETF itself. Now, is that enormous in terms of uh, uplift? No, but if you have a, a significant amount in there, that's not a bad return on your investment. Certainly, five bucks at 70 is better than about eight or nine percent just since the beginning of October. So as a result, you can see that by combining your currency and your ETF activities, you can be in pretty good shape. And as I said, if you are not the faint of heart you could also be in a position where you could look for some of the leverage DTFs to see if you can speed it, speed it up. Now, notice also here that you had the reverse is true, back up into the bands, but a failure and a continuation on the downside, which over a period of several months, from October 18 into the next year could have uh, brought your account in that 5 to 7% range, which is a reasonably safe investment based on this weekly chart. If you wanted to take a look at the daily chart, uh, you could obviously do that as well. Here we go. There's the daily chart. And you can see this was the uplift here. If we take a look once again in our trick of grabbing in the middle of our uh, history viewer, we pull back here. You can see that the daily chart had some moves. So you want to be a little careful on the ETFs. These are okay, but maybe they're not going to help you in terms of a longer term buy and hold kind of a strategy. You have to be a little careful. It's a downward curve, but clearly, clearly the weekly chart was the one that helped us out the most. Okay, so I hope that uh, overview of the Fidelity Active Trader Pro ETFs and the MetaTrader uh, 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 Australian US dollar chart with our double whammy plus uh, indicators and template up will really help you to trade with the trend and keep your profits intact. So thanks for watching and see you next time.